We had Labor Day yesterday, so we didn't exactly have class, and I did most of my work yesterday, and then um, everything today was about a review of yesterday, and then also the lecture that, that was today. So it was a lot of um, lecturing today, but uh, I wanted to talk about it so you guys know what's going on. Basically, on 30, day 31, it was re about React tooling, about using the Create React app and why it came into being, because there was a lot of JavaScript tool fatigue or React tool fatigue about implementing it, including Webpack, Babel, and uh, all the React libraries and everything. So they taught uh, that we should use Create React app just to get started to make things quickly, to get up and running. And then the project for day 31 was basically we're making an Instagram clone app, which is very appropriate because Facebook is the one that uh, is running Instagram. And we had to do the layouts and also do all the components, uh, how they're nested in the tree and everything. So that took a while for me um, because of following specific instructions that were in the uh, repo. And so the repo is actually also for the whole week. So we're working on the same repo, this Instagram app, for the whole week. And so that was pretty much day 31. Day 32 was learning how to uh, deal with life cycles in React. We didn't really go into the advanced ones, like, um, I don't know, some, some of the later ones after the render. Um, we went over component uh, will mount, component did mount, and then I think there was a third one as well. Um, and we really didn't use it too much in our project as well. We only use it in component did mount. Um, and the, the example that was given was we pulled data from an API after the DOM has rendered already. And that will uh, pull up this API, uh, pull the data from this API and then load it onto our website. And so in today's project, we did a very similar thing instead of setting the state at the very beginning from a dummy data um, JavaScript file, we basically wrote component did mount. And so we'll set the state initially as a blank, an empty array, and then we'll use component did mount to load up the data into that empty array. So that was kind of the React lifecycle today. And of course we had more um, abstracting meaning that we we put uh, single states in different components as well so like in the comments component where you'll have um, like maybe amount of likes or something it will have its own state uh, it's going to be a, a class component it will have its own state and then we use that to kind of adjust the likes accordingly so kind of just abstracting that away and then having to implement a search function based on the user, a very simple one. So if the user uh, is, if there's a match with one of the users, it will filter specifically their posts. And I know that's a lot, but um, it was more code than anything. It just took a long time. And I'll, I'll show it here to you guys so you know what we were kind of working on. But uh, that's kind of what we worked on uh, for day 31 and 32. It's definitely getting a little bit more tough, um, especially tomorrow we're going to higher order components, something that I haven't really used before in React. I've probably touched it once or twice by doing a Redux project once, but that doesn't really count because uh, this is a little bit different. So the training kit is what our manual is, is uh, there's a lot of articles and um, instruction and examples and exercises to do so those have been kept in, keeping me really busy and uh, right now it's about 11:30 at night and I'm kind of still going over it trying to play catch up I didn't have much time this weekend because I was traveling back home so um, just playing a little bit catch up and um, react is definitely it's cool but it's very deep also so you have to spend quite a amount of time on it Today is day 33 and we covered React composition patterns. We dealt with higher order components as well as local storage and using state and abstracting out different components. 
And the hardest thing for me was using the higher order components since I really haven't used it in production before. And so it got, uh, it had took some getting used to. Um, I probably have used it before with Redux once and also when there's some kind of authentication. The project today was pretty difficult. I ran into some trouble, but I managed to get past it in the end. It was basically checking the state if there is a current user logged in and also when the component first mounts it also checks if there's a user in the local storage as well and then if there is render out the Instagram clone component if there's not then it should render out the login page and the higher order components was also difficult for me because you're basically wrapping the app um, well you you're using authenticate and you put app uh, inside as an argument to verify overall a good day uh, definitely a struggle but I understood everything and now I'm going to review ahead for tomorrow and tomorrow's topic will be CSS and JS, which is an exciting topic for styling different React components. All right, so we've hit day 34 and passed it. So today was all about CSS and JS, and it's basically a styling pattern for React um, components. So first we went over React Strap, which is basically React plus Bootstrap. If you haven't used Bootstrap before, it's a popular a UI library for uh, building websites and I've personally used it before but I didn't like how restrictive it was sometimes and there were some parts that I had to tweak the CSS in order to make it work so I'm not too big of a fan on uh, bootstrap because everything on bootstrap I can almost pretty much do with JavaScript um, and then the second part that we talked about was called styled components this is a newer technology I think that came out recently more, more like a year or two ago and I really enjoy this because it encapsulates everything into one file so you have your react component it has the JavaScript the HTML and then now with style components you can put uh, you can write literal CSS into it as well using tag template literals so uh, there are other libraries like emotion and um, I forgot the other names but there are other CSS and JS library but this one is probably my favorite um, style components I'm glad that we are learning this in our uh, curriculum so today's project was basically converting everything we did this past week since it's been the same project and converting it to basically style components the only component that I wasn't able to com convert was the index um, because that's kind of like at the root and then I didn't know how to make it work so all, everything else I was able to do it and so the style components for me was pretty easy I've used Gatsby before and with Gatsby I wrote a lot of style components and then also tried some different things too so this was really familiar with for me and other than that um, tomorrow is the sprint challenge I'm not sure what it is yet but I'm not um, I'm not too uh, afraid because most of the things that we did this week I was familiar with and React is difficult but I think if you put in the time and just go over the training kit as well as uh, reading up on materials and articles you can pick it up so I've been working pretty hard um, I've been doing stuff after class before class reviewing notes uh, reading new stuff just to learn uh, so it's possible but you just gotta stick with it you know React is really cool but you gotta put in your due diligence and that's all I have for today. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow after the sprint challenge. All right, so that was the end of day 35 and we had our sprint challenge today. It was working with an old project that we had called Lambda Times. Basically, it renders out different cards that has articles, um, supposedly, um, but this is just a mock. And then what happens is that you have to link up all the components together correctly in order to make it work and in order to render out the different features. And there was a lot of uh, conditional rendering as well as using 
um, a higher order component and then also trying to make the tabs work and I got stuck on that for the longest time but eventually I was able to get it I just my only tip is to work through each single piece of the component so go through console log everything make sure that the the props types is what it's supposed to be and then eventually it should work but I don't know I I couldn't get it to work for the longest time I think I was confused with the naming convention or prop passing down or something but uh, I took my time with it and then it came out all right and then we used style components to uh, style all the different um, parts of the application and I didn't have a hard time with that at all I've used stock components before like you like I've said and the one thing I wasn't able to do is import everything from index.css which was already by here by default I wasn't able to import everything yet because I haven't learned how to uh, import global styles yet and I saw an article yesterday so I'll start exploring more of it Otherwise, the project was pretty fair. All, some of the naming conventions were kind of confusing to me. And then there's something that was in past tense too, like searched uh, something. And then I type search, you know, tab or something. It's supposed to be searched tab. So that was a little bit confusing for me at times. But um, overall, good project, good end to Intermediate React. And I'm super excited to head into next week about um more advanced react i think we're hopping into redux maybe i have to take a look at the calendar but uh glad to wrap up this week and this weekend i'm hoping to review stock components maybe dig a little bit deeper as well as jump ahead into next week's material and i've been meaning to try to get on cocademy just to get a jump start on java and python and uh i'll see what time i have this weekend anyway thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this week's uh, this week seven that we had about intermediate react.